Hello and welcome to our service here today from Fort William Kilmally linked with Kilmanevig and Dura and Glencoe St Mundus and we hope you will enjoy worshipping with us today. We're going to begin with some words from Psalm 123. I lift up my eyes to you, to you who sit enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a female slave look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us, for we have endured no end of contempt, we have endured no end of ridicule from the arrogant, of contempt from the proud. Amen. The psalmist writes of looking to God for his mercy and for his comfort when he has to withstand contempt and ridicule from others. And even Jesus himself had to withstand such contempt and ridicule when he went back to his own hometown and preached. And so we're going to hear that very story as Bill Skeen is going to read it for us from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Jesus left that place and went back to his hometown, followed by his disciples. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many people were there, and when they heard him, they were all amazed. Where did he get all this? they asked. What wisdom is this that has been given him? How does he perform miracles? Isn't he the carpenter? the son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon and his sisters living here? And so they rejected him. Jesus said to them, Prophets are respected everywhere except in their own hometown and by their relatives and their family. He was not able to perform many miracles there, except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He was greatly surprised because the people did not have faith. Then Jesus went to the villages round there, teaching the people. He called the twelve disciples together and sent them out two by two. He gave them authority over evil spirits and ordered them, don't take anything with you on your journey except a stick. No bread, no beggar's bag, no money in your pockets. Wear sandals, but don't carry an extra shirt. He also said, wherever you're welcomed, stay in the same house until you leave that place. If you come to a town where people do not welcome you or will not listen to you, Leave it and shake the dust off your feet. That will be a warning to them. So they went out and preached that people should turn away from their sins. They drove out many demons and rubbed olive oil on many sick people and healed them. Amen. Do you ever notice that Life has a way of throwing you a few unexpected curveballs. This week's been a bit like that. Last weekend, I was enjoying a rare opportunity to get together with close family to mark a couple of family celebrations. Uh, and within a day or two, everything had changed. And most of those who had been in touch with each other over that weekend uh, had all contracted COVID. I thought I was safe, I was double vaccinated, I took all the precautions, I wore masks, I did everything I was supposed to do, I didn't go where I wasn't supposed to go, I hadn't been to watch football games in big crowds, but still like everybody else, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you can just be vulnerable. So it's been a pretty unpleasant week, but I'm glad to say that uh, everybody is, is doing well and there's no, there's, there's, there's no fallout from that that's still causing problems. And it makes me think that life catches us unexpectedly sometimes. And that happens in the story that we're going to read today. 
I suppose it means there's no reason for us ever to be self-satisfied or to think that we've got everything right or that we've got life sorted. And so that will be the theme of this worship today. Jesus is surprised to find that in his hometown of Nazareth, his mission seems to have very little effect. People aren't willing to listen because they're overthinking. They know too much. Isn't this the Jesus we knew as a wee boy running up the street? Isn't this the one who worked in the carpenter's shop? Don't we know his brothers and his sisters and his family? How can he have something to teach us about God? And so they don't listen. And because they don't listen, something very interesting happens. We're told that Jesus wasn't able to perform any miracles there, apart from laying his hands on a few sick people and healing them. To be honest, that sounds quite impressive to me, but compared to what has happened in some other places, it's limited. And the thing is this, the ability of Jesus to make a difference is about more than his undoubted power and his undoubted ability to bring God's love into people's lives. It's also about the way people react and respond to him and to his message. It's somewhere in the connection between the message Jesus offers and the faith that people bring to that, that God is at work, that God's spirit really makes a significant difference. In the second of the stories, Jesus sends out a fairly inadequate and ill-prepared team. His disciples are to go to the villages and they're not to take anything much apart from a stick. They're not allowed any bread, a beggar's bag, money in the pockets. They can wear sandals, but not carry an extra shirt. They don't know in advance where they're going to stay, who's going to welcome them, what the, their accommodation will be. They simply are to go and preach his message. Now compared to Jesus, God's son, teaching in the synagogues and, and sharing the good news, it seems a bit second rate. And yet they get results. They went out and preached that people should turn away from their sins. They drove out many demons and rubbed oil on many sick people and healed them. They seem to be having more effect than Jesus was able to have in Nazareth. What's the difference? It's certainly not that the disciples are somehow experts in this or better at the, that kind of mission than Jesus. Of course not. But the difference is that people aren't overthinking it with them. They're not trying to answer every question, dot every I, cross every T. They're simply willing to come with their needs and to seek help. And the disciples, with God's strength, for they have none of their own, are able to make a difference in many lives. So what are these stories about? I think they're saying that God's ability to work is about the relationship between you and me and Jesus. It's not simply that Jesus is able to do amazing things. Of course he is. Everybody knows that. But it's that he's able to do amazing things in us and with us and through us when we're trusting, when we put our faith in him. That's not offering magic tricks. Even Jesus at places where he couldn't fix things and couldn't make things better. But it is about saying that there's something powerful in that relationship of shared faith which makes a difference to lives. There are a couple of short items of church news to share with you today. The first is to say, sorry if this service has been a bit strange compared to some of the others. We've had a few technical problems. I did say earlier that life sometimes throws us some curveballs. And while I wasn't well, the rest of the team, Morag with Bill and Rory, were putting the service together. And unfortunately we had some technical issues which meant that some of the, the parts of the service which they had recorded 
weren't able to transfer between one technology and another. I won't bore you with any details, but despite our best efforts, uh, we've had to cobble together a service with their bits and some pieces that I've added in. Uh, I'm grateful to them for the work they've done. Particular apologies to Rory, whose prayer I wasn't able to get and to use, but I will use again on a future occasion. One other piece of church news is for those of you who are members of Glencoe St Mundus, you will recently have received a letter from the session clerk telling you about what's happening with the building at St Mundus. As you know, the this decision has been taken that the building has been closed and apart from a, a final service won't be reopening. One part of the procedure that needs to take place is that there has to be a congregational vote on permission to begin the process of the sale and disposal of the building. So you'll be getting a ballot slip for that this week if you're on the electoral roll of the congregation. Just to be clear, the options on that include the option of giving the session permission to start that process of a sale and disposal of the building, and you'll be voting for or against that. Voting against it, I'm afraid, is not a way to retain the building and keep it open. It would be retained and shut and would leave all the costs with the session and congregation. So just to say to you in advance, uh, that is coming. It's a formal procedure that we have to go through. I hope you will participate and show the session your support uh, in doing the difficult things that they have to do in the days ahead. Now, shall we come to God in prayer? Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you that it is but in the cooperation between Jesus and ourselves that we really see you making differences to lives. In Nazareth, where the people weren't prepared to trust him, nothing much happened. But elsewhere, where the disciples, with all their failures and inadequacies, did the best they could and worked along with the people sharing your message, all kinds of amazing things took place. So give us confidence, give us the willingness to, to trust you, not to overthink every single aspect of faith and to need the answer to absolutely every question before we can go ahead in journeying with you, learning from you, trusting you. And we pray that you'll be with us in all that we say, in all that we do. Lord, we want to seek your blessing on people who have been through times of ill health and trial and struggle in recent days and those who continue to go through that. Thank you for all those who help and support them in a whole range of ways, medical and other support services, and for those who are just good friends to the people round about them. We pray too for everyone who's been through a time of hurt or loss. Give your blessing and your peace to them. And Father, we ask that you'll hear us as we join together in the words of the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this week's worship. We look forward to having you with us again next week and we wish you well for the week ahead. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.